Hello, everyone. Welcome to our uh, virtual voter ed course all about voting by mail. I know it's all you hear about now, and it seems to get more confusing every day. So I brought the expert uh, of all experts on vote by mail, the amazing Amber McReynolds of Vote at Home, who is going to walk us through what the heck we should be doing to make sure that we can get a ballot, fill it out, make sure it's counted, all the things. So thank you, Amber, so much for joining us. And yeah, it's great, it's great to be I, here. While I pull up our slideshow, why don't you tell the folks all about you and Vote at Home? Sure. Well, it's great to be here. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Amber McReynolds. I'm the CEO of the National Vote at Home Institute. Uh, we are a nonpartisan, nonprofit national organization that's been working across the country for the last two and a half years to improve voting access and provide more options for voters. Um, we particularly focus on vote by mail programs. So in, you know, on one end of the spectrum, you might be a state like Colorado or California where a ballot is gonna be mailed to you automatically if you're active and registered to vote. Uh, or you might be in a state where you have to sign up and request it. But regardless, our organization works on improving that process and how it works across the country. I love it. So let's dive right in and start with how to request a ballot. If I want to vote by mail, I don't even know where to start. How do I get them to send me one to my house? Well, so a great website to go to is canivote.org, and that is run by the National Associations of Secretaries of State. Uh, and you can go there. It'll pull up your state. It'll have the specific rules and links and all of that about the process in your state. So that's a great resource. Uh, you have to request it. And if you haven't done it yet, you should do it today. Uh, it's also important that you make sure your address is up to date because that's also critical to ensuring that your ballot arrives to where you are. Absolutely. Um, all right, so then our next question is, voter registration. Do you have to register in order to vote by mail? How do you, what, what are the rules about voter registration and how they apply to voting by mail? Sure. Well, you do have to be a registered voter before you can uh, sign up for a vote by mail ballot. So it's really, really important that you're registered, but also that your address is up to date. Uh, that's critically important and you want to make sure you keep it up to date, especially if you remain as an absentee voter, or you want to continue to get those ballots that way. Absolutely. All right. And moving right along. Okay, so now I have this thing and it's at my house and I'm looking at it. How do I fill out my ballot? So how to complete your ballot. So your, your ballot is going to come with a couple of different envelopes. So they'll be in like an outgoing envelope. It'll have a whole packet. You'll get a return envelope. And like this is an example of my return envelope that's got the Denver Votes logo. Um, but the envelope has usually instructions about how to return it right here it tells you remember to sign you got to remember to sign your envelope and then it'll have an affidavit so on the back there's an affidavit that you've got to read as a voter and then it'll have a place for you to sign um, in some states you might have to get a witness um, there might be extra requirements so just make sure you follow the instructions that you get uh, you also get an instruction sheet so in addition to your ballot your instructions will come this is mine from denver um, the, Denver sends out an I voted sticker to everyone that you get to peel off and wear. So that's kind of nice. Not everybody does that. Um, but this will actually tell you um, exactly how to vote your ballot. So it'll tell you like the contents, how to fold it back in. Um, and then on, within it, it'll also tell you how to actually mark the ballot. And so the ballot, a lot of ballots are the ovals, kind of like Scantron tests that we all took back in high school. Um, but you have to fill out that ballot. and a lot of times they'll say use black or blue ink. Only use black or blue ink. Don't use pink or red or green or markers or any of those sorts of things because that'll impact how the ballot gets processed and counted. So make sure you follow that instruction. And usually that instruction is listed on the top of the ballot. Um, I actually have, let me see, I think I've got a sample here. Sorry, I should have had this pulled up. <laughs> um, but I've got a sample here from a Denver, um, and a, a sample ballot from Denver. And um, hold on, get this up. So this is kind of what it looks like on the top. It'll give you an instruction on how to complete the ovals, what ink to use, all of that. And then the ballot content will be, you know, will vary by state, but there's a ton of content. Like there's candidates, 
judges, ballot issues that are super long and confusing to most voters. Um, but you'll have all of that. And you've got to complete your ballot. And the great thing about voting absentee or voting at home is that you've got time to go through this massively large amount of content and read everything. And you can research issues on your laptop. You can look up information you don't know and make really good informed decisions. And then once you get done voting your ballot, you package it all back up and it goes in that return envelope. Um, in some states, you can track your ballot. So you can sign up to get a text or an email notification about it, um, but you'll be able to mail it back, drop it off, any of those sorts of things. And all of the ways you can return it is contained in those instruction sheets. So that packet comes with all that information that you need. Read the instructions. You just said, my favorite thing about pantsless voting, as I call it, is I could be home. I don't have to have on pants. I always have a bottle of wine all of my devices and then I just spend all day researching and looking things up and talking to my friends about what they think about ballot measures and then I fill it out and I send it. It's so easy. That's right. And you know, with mine, with my experience, when my ballot comes, I actually have a seven and a nine year old and we have been voting together as a family for many years. In fact, when my ballot comes, one of them usually says, mom, when are we going to work on your ballot? Um, so I sit down with them. I, re you know, they read through the instructions, they read the candidate names. A lot of times they say, mom, what does governor do? What does mayor do? And we have this whole, civ it's a whole civics lesson for them. So if you have kids or if you know kids, it's good to bring in those kids into the process so that they know how to do it. That's amazing. I love that. All right. So then we filled out our ballot. This is a thing. It's so important. I know that you know that over 500,000 absentee ballots were thrown out during the primaries. And a big reason was that people forget this simple thing, signatures. Can you talk to us a little bit about the signatures you need on your vote by mail ballot? So your signature absolutely matters. In most states, there's a signature verification process. Uh, so you want to not do like a grocery store signature where you're just scribbling on the on the pad, but you really want to make it make it match your signature that you used when you completed your voter registration form, or that you uh, uh, use at the DMV. Um, and if there's any question about that, you can go back into your election office and actually check what's on file and update it if you want to update your signature. But make sure you use a good signature and you make sure you complete that signature because we don't want to see a ballot get rejected just simply because you didn't sign it. Yes, oh my gosh. Everybody watching this, please sign, tell all your friends to sign, double, triple check that you've signed, it's so important. All right, so now we we filled it out, everybody has signed the back of the envelope. I know that there are multiple different ways that people could return their ballot depending on the state they live in. Can you tell us a little bit about the different ways to return a ballot? Yes, so every state varies probably not surprising, but every state does it differently. But in a lot of states, you can drop it off at a secure drop box. So this is a picture of one in Denver. And on the Denver instructions, they actually list all the available drop box locations. So there's tons of them. They're available 24 by seven. You can drop it off at any of those locations. Um, Denver also, in a lot of jurisdictions, offer drive up drop offs. You can literally drive through, hand your ballot to election judges, and you don't even have to get out of your car. Um, that's available in lots of different states. Uh, you can also drop it directly to your local election clerk's office. So some states don't have all of these drop boxes or don't have drive up drop off, but you can literally walk it into your clerk's office to be sure it's there on time. Uh, some states allow you to drop it off at polling places. So you can do that on election day, but make sure you check your rules in your state because that's not the same in every state. Um, and then of course you can mail it back. Some states pay for your postage some states don't, so you want to make sure that you really know how much postage is going to be on there. Um, and if you're going to mail it back, you need to make sure that you understand your state deadlines for receiving the ballot. So if it has to be received by election day, you want to make sure your ballot is mailed back at least eight days in advance because we want to make sure it has time to get through the postal stream. Uh, some states accept postmark, meaning it has to be postmarked by the day before the election or the election day itself, and then they receive it. As long as it's received by a certain period of time after election day, it'll be counted. So like the biggest amount of time in the country is actually in California, where they accept it for 17 days after the election, as long as it's postmarked by the day of. 
uh, that's not the case in a lot of states. So you just have to make sure you know your state laws and your state rules, and there will be information contained in your instruction sheet on how that works if you're gonna mail it back. Yes, I love that we get a long time in California, but it also means that it takes us a really long time to find out who won <laughs> any seat. Um, okay, so once your ballot is dropped into this mysterious box, or you've turned it in, or you've mailed it in, what happens to it? Where does it go? So your ballot goes back to the local election officials. So a lot of people think secretaries of state run the process and all that. It's actually your local election office, with the exception of one state, Rhode Island processes all the ballots at the state level. Um, but your ballot goes back to the election official. They check your signature. They check that on file. They date stamp it as when it was received. Um, and they, and they look at that signature and compare it to what they have on file and make sure it matches. Um, there's a few exceptions to that process in a couple of different states, but essentially they're accepting your ballot, verifying that it's your ballot and it's you that returned it. Um, and they're also making sure that, you know, a lot of states will actually check the thickness. So there's thickness detectors on the equipment that will make sure there's not like extra stuff in there or, you know, what have you. So it might outstack it if it senses an, an issue. Um, states are also looking to make sure it hasn't been tampered with. So if you're, if it looks to be torn open or something like that, that doesn't look like the voter came, they might reach out to the voter and say, hey, your ballot came kind of mangled. Do you want to come back in and fill out a new one? Or, you know, how do you want to resolve this? Um, so the election office is, is accepting that. And then once it's good and they know it's your ballot, they send it into what's called ballot preparation. Sorry, sorry, my mom's here and she's, um, so um, they accept it and then they, and then they extract the ballot. So once we know it's good, they pull the voted ballot, they separate it from the envelope that has your name on it so that now the ballot is anonymous. That ballot then gets flattened and it goes into the counting room to be processed. And what's really important is you have a right to a secret ballot. So when we when we we have a specific process for separating the envelope from the ballot to make sure that your anonymity is maintained, um, and then your ballot gets counted. Uh, all right, so that is the process. Thank you, because I bet that there are very few people on the planet who actually have any idea what happens to their ballot when they when they shuffle it off into the world. So thank you for that. So uh, then you talked a little bit about how a lot of states have the option to track their ballot. But can you talk a little bit more about sort of what that means? Sure, well, uh, California is a great example. They just announced a statewide ballot tracking program. So this, this technology was actually pioneered back in Denver way back in 2009. Um, and I was the deputy at the time and we decided we wanted to create a system just like you track a package, but for ballots. And so, uh, on the return envelope, as well as the outgoing, there's actually um, intelligent mail barcodes that are added on to the piece of mail that tell us where it is in the postal stream. So if you have a process like California, you can actually see where your ballot is at every moment in the process. You get a text or an email when the ballot's been printed, when it's gone to the postal service, uh, when it's through that process, and then all the way back again, when your election official receives it, you get a text saying, your ballot's been accepted for counting. And you get that confirmation, you have that full visibility into knowing where your ballot is at every moment. Uh, not every state has that, but a few states have announced those systems. In fact, a few more are gonna be announcing in the next few days. Um, and then a lot of states, most states, actually have an online lookup tool on their state website. So you might not get a text or an email and you won't get that automatic communications, but you at least can go to their state website and confirm that your ballot was either mailed by the election official or that it's been received for counting. So that's a really great option for voters to know that their ballot made it in time. Um, and we actually, Vote at Home has a Medium article and a email notification process that's coming out very soon that outlines all of these different variables in all the states. So you can see exactly what happens in each state with regards to ballot tracking. That's awesome. And that's actually a good place for me to remind viewers that if you look under this video, uh, there will be a bunch of different resources and I will include the link to that Medium article when it comes out so that you can check that out and make sure that you know 
what the process is in your state. So yay. Um, awesome. So, all right, we've done everything. We've registered, we've tracked, we've done all the things. Um, is there anything else that people should know about voting by mail or any last things that you think that folks should know before we tune out? Sure. Well, I, so what I would say first is there's been a lot of misinformation about the Postal Service. The Postal Service has magnificent capacity. They process more than 400 million pieces of mail a day. And there are less than 200 million voters that will likely do this. So even if everyone returned it on the same day, it's still not even half of the capacity that they normally process. That's not even including their Christmas rush and all the other uh, increases that they see throughout the year. So the Postal Service has capacity to do this. They also have rolled out some new communication tools in the last week. They have a website that talks about mailing deadlines in each state. All of that is through the United States Post Office's website right now. And I would, I would advise voters to also rely on that information too, um, because that's really important, especially if you're going to be mailing your ballot back. Uh, the next thing is that realize that in states where you have to sign up for an absentee ballot, that means that somebody has to process that or process that request or data enter that into a system. So if you go online and sign up, that's not instantaneous. The election official has to process that and then they have to mail you your ballot. So if you put a request in today and tomorrow you're on Twitter or on social media saying, I didn't get my ballot yet, it's likely because it's going through that data entry process and there are thousands of people just like you that are trying to do that too. So realize that election officials are facing a significant amount of volume. They're processing voter registrations, they're processing absentee requests, they're doing it on shoestring budgets. So just give them, have a little bit of patience, um, make sure that you request early, request today if you wanna vote this way. Uh, know your options in the states, know the rules in your states, um, and, and, and have exercise a little bit of patience for the election officials to get the ballot to you. Uh, if, if it goes a long period of time and you haven't received it, and the states have already mailed ballots, you might want to check on that and you can look up on your state portal, uh, for instance, to see what the status is. Um, but just exercise a little bit of patience because there are a lot of people that are signing up and the earlier you do it, the better it is for election officials. Absolutely. That is all excellent advice. Thank you, Amber, so much for joining us. That This has been really helpful. I think you've probably told a lot of people a lot of things they had no idea about. Um, and hopefully we will make sure that everybody who votes by mails sign the back of your envelope. I can't scream it loudly enough. Sign it and turn it in early. Yes, and turn it in as early as possible. <laughs> That's right. And you know what? The, the earlier you turn it in, the campaign calls stop, they stop knocking on your door, they stop sending you emails because you're checked off the list. So a lot of that stuff that's annoying stops <laughs> if you if you turn your ballot in early too. If that's not an incentive to vote early, I don't know what is. <laughs> I can't do anything about the commercials yet, but we're, we'll try to figure that out in the future. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you ever so much, this is so helpful. Thanks for having me.